I think if we're going to touch the macro in New York City and and then through that other global cities, and maybe this is happening in multiple cities at once, um, I think somebody's got to drill down to get to traction that speaks loud enough to be heard at the macro level Well, people are saying, how are you doing that? And then that we begin to find leaders to multiply those hubs into other parts of the city. And then that city gets multiplied into other cities. This is the H3X podcast where we discuss the head, heart, and hands of the multiplying church and our leaders. Today, it's uh, Mark Gearing back with us so you guys don't have to deal with the insanity of, of last week. And so we can actually get back to some things that are that are going to be of helpful and importance. It, uh, just so a joke. Uh, yeah. And me, Dave Miller, um, that we're there. My wife and I had a great time last week yes. talking about our, our, our way of doing things. But um, I think that our listeners will be super encouraged today, Mark, to talk about the way you're framing up and the Lord is showing you an understanding of how to view the totality of New York as we jump into the macro today in our conversation. Yeah, thanks, David. Um, first of all, I love it. I love the uh, the changing it up, and uh, Anne is amazing. So if you all haven't listened to that podcast, uh, please please take it, check it out. But man, we we were talking offline before we hit record just about um, a lot of things. But we've been in this uh, maybe we could say a theme of talking macro and micro um, over the last season. I think it's I think it's something we're just going to continue to talk about because that is the essence of the work. Um, but we were talking about just. What does that look like to to uh, to live in the tension between being a, a local owner and uh, and then catalyzing and, and mobilizing people to be local owners at the same time? And so I'm here in New York, and that's something we've been uh, at g- getting after for a couple of years. And uh, the way that we're seeing it right now, there's a lot of work yet to be done. Yeah, and I want I want to ask you a few questions just to let you kind of tease out some of the way in which your calling to New York is even starting to gain clarity and, and the Lord is starting to show you even more of what he's expecting and what he's needing and why he's brought you and Meg in particular to the city and the way in which you're conceiving of the totality of New York in relation to Paul and not just a journey, but all of his journeys and not just a city, but the 30 year ministry of Paul just Show me some ways in which you're looking at New York now and say, instead of it just being a Corinth or an Ephesus or uh, a Galatia, you're looking at it as a Jerusalem to Illyricum way of life that may require of you 30 years before you can even, as we said, get that upper room of leaders like at the Troas Summit that we see kind of towards the end of Acts and Acts 20. Yeah, I'll try to put words to some thoughts I've got, Dave. Um, and I appreciate you asking these questions. Like I've got thoughts to offer on a podcast. I don't even know if I do, but uh, you know, we we live in the era of globalization, right? When um, we can touch uh, Pakistan and Australia and all these different places um, at just the touch of our of our phone, right? And um, and so it kind of expands our vision of what is the ends of the earth in Acts one eight. Uh, but I think just in terms of the numbers of New York City. It, it there's a lot of work to be done. And then if I think about just uh, what it takes for teams to be raised up, for disciples to be made, we use that phrase muddy boots all the time. And so what's that going to take to get the job done um, is, where, is where we've got to start in tackling a place like this. And it's so nuanced in just the number of segments and... Um, and the need for that to, to to touch all these different demographics and all these different peoples and places that uh, it's going to take a while to get to, to no place left in New York City. So what I'm hearing you kind of articulating is, uh, as it stands right now, you're starting to see that the calling to New York is a lifetime calling. Now, yeah. the Lord can change and he can adapt and he can do whatever. But you're starting to see this perspective and you're starting to be understanding of in order for us to really make a dent in New York, that it's going to require you and Meg's lifetime of ministry at this point in your perspective to bury down and start developing leaders. And how does that then transition to, okay, the macro of New York 
is actually pushing you to the place to where you realize how important a commitment to the micro in New York is. How does that micro in terms of the culture that you're seeing, the leadership yeah. uh, dynamics that you're seeing in New York, the ways in which other church people in New York yeah. and missionaries and those who want to reach the gospel in New York respond, how does the micro interact with yeah. that? Yeah, well, I, I have uh, a desire and a vision along with you, Dave. We've talked about this since we first met to see cities reached. And I mean, and I mean, you've got a list of cities, and I and I believe that uh, that that God wants to do that in our generation. That we can be a part of seeing global cities, even around the world, reached. And so the question is, how do we get there? How do we get to that point? Um, and so I think what I'm more and more putting chips in on is the idea of depth leads to breadth, um, if I had to say it one way. And, and I think there's some commonalities to these global cities that I think I keep hearing from leaders that have been the stayers here in New York of, uh, to use the phrase, like, show me the money. They're like, I, I want to see what's actually happening and how you're actually getting to traction. I think that's because the nature of global city is like a transience factor. And especially in New York, people come here, they get started in something and they move away. They come, they move away, or they move to another part of the city. And so the transients, like people are in, people are out. And that happens not just in the marketplace, in the world, but in the church as well. There's people who come in full of zeal, full of ideas, and then they're gone. And so as I've been getting networked here, it's taken a while because a lot of the leaders I meet are like, yep, cool. Heard some of that before. How's it going? Like, and they're they're like not disrespectful, but they're just just like show me the money. Like, I want to I want to see that that's actually working. What you're talking about, and so all that to say to answer your question is like, I think if we're gonna touch the macro in New York City, and and then through that other global cities, and maybe this is happening in multiple cities at once, um, I think somebody's got to drill down to get to traction that speaks loud enough to be heard at the macro level, where well, people are saying, how are you doing that? And then that, we begin to find leaders to multiply those hubs into other parts of the city. And then that city gets multiplied into other cities. And so all that to say the strategy of, is still macro, is still thinking like, how do we think no place left in New York and even uh, until the ends of the earth globally? But to get there is gonna require, like you said, burying ourselves down in to some depth and getting to some traction that speaks loud enough for us to begin to attract those kind of leaders that can multiply it and uh, begin to multiply ourselves into them. Yeah, um, and we've had um, we've had so many conversations about this muddy boots conversation. But what you're, I think you're articulating is just that the Lord is helping to formulate your commitment, your understanding, and your clarity on where to focus your time, where to focus your energies, literally which mud to get into. And so one of the things that I hear you saying is to put words to it is, is that you're really wanting to be a catalytic practitioner, not necessarily yes. a practicing yes. catalyst, Yes, right? That you're saying, I need to figure things out so that when I do pop my head up, when I do have conversations, I have something to offer that's going to be catalytic because yeah. it's tested, it's tried, it, it comes with. And I think this is the big kicker, um, right? Pro Proverbs. Wisdom is known by her children. Like you're coming to the yes. table with some sage wisdom that's saying, I have been there, done that, and here's the ways in which I can help you. And I think yep. those leaders in New York that are long, have longevity, right? The ones you're talking yep. about that have been right. around the block a few times, yes. they're just saying, they're not being rude, but they're saying, we've had a lot of people come and go. What we're looking for is who's going to come in here with sage wisdom that's that's yes. tried and true because they're, they're walking with muddy boots, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so that's not going to be true of every leader that we meet. But if we're going to uh, if we're going to connect with some leaders that are influential and more widely connected macro, those are the kind of leaders that have been here. Um, those are the kinds of leaders because they're connected because they've been here long enough that other people have moved in and out and they still have the connections with other people that have been here that long. And so to, to have a voice with that crowd is exactly what you're saying. It's that they're, they're going to be uh, even those that have got a vision for multiplying disciples. They've got some apostolic wiring. They want to see this thing multiply. They they've got big vision. They are still saying, "Show me the money on the micro level," because they understand the nature of the city. So, to that end, we've got a we've got to play in that sandbox. 
that's the sandbox we're in. So that's the sandbox we got to play in, which means that we've got to think like you're talking about where we've got to be a practitioner that is catalyzing and then re con then connecting those pieces over and over again um, over the seasons. Yeah. And the, I think the, the tension here that um, is a reality is that when a kernel of the wheat falls to the ground and dies, it bears much fruit is right. a principle that I think scripturally in the kingdom is really hard for us to understand sometimes because what it's telling us is, is that when we go and lose ourselves, we gain ourselves. When we go and die, we gain life. When we go yes. and bury ourselves, that we reproduce. And sometimes whenever you become that kernel of wheat that says, okay, I'm going to go down to the macro, I'm going to bury my head and I'm going to go die to myself and do this. We get scared that we'll be forgotten. And it's not because we're worried necessarily about our own pride, but we're worried about what is that going to do when it affects the macro? because I need the connections. I need yes. the relationships right. for me to be able to have the help, to have the collaboration, to have all those things Yes, because I realize that multiplication is so far beyond myself. I need other people. Right. And so here is a tension that happens where you go, if I go and become this kernel of wheat, I bury my head and I die for the next two or three years and basically almost become forgotten. What is that going to do whenever I need to reach back up right to grab relationships and to move things forward and to be catalytic and so therein lies that tension that i think the scriptures is super helpful for us to understand right. and that is the lord you made this statement before we came on a podcast describing what you're seeing happening in the life of someone that you're um with right now right. god can do more in a week and a half than we can do in a year and a half whenever he's yes. ready to move and right. that's where we're really leaning back on okay spirit you're going to have to do the work only you can do. Yes. Yeah, that's right. And I think there's, uh, when we talk about that work of the catalyst, uh, the catalyst can function. Uh, I mean, the, the, the goal is to, uh, vision cast something that's not, and to bring it into being. Um, but, uh, there's some that like you, you either have to talk about the thing, uh, that you don't have and call people to be a part of it, or you can campaign the thing that's happening. Um, and then uh, that opens up doors. So I think to your point, it's like when we become the grain of wheat and we dig in, um, once that's sprouting up out of the ground, we'll just work this metaphor to death. Once it's, it's come up out of the ground and it's starting to grow. It's Jesus' it's metaphor. It. Let's use it. Yeah, it's his metaphor. But once, it's, once it comes out of the ground and people start to see it, they're like, oh, well, I want to know how that, that happened. Um, and that starts to open up doors without you even try. You being attract basically uh, those kind of leaders. And I think the big kicker at that, yeah, I think the big kicker at that season of life is to not lose what you're talking about, which is, is I, I'm a campaigner, I'm a catalyst, and I need to campaign this, which yes. means I'm going to have to open myself up to new relationships. I'm yes. going to have to entrust the work to other people and help. And so right. one of the things that kind of happens is, is that sometimes you get people who bury themselves in the micro. They yeah. become that kernel of wheat that falls to the ground, it dies, and then they get a little bit of pride about that, that I did it and I don't want anybody else to help me because y'all didn't pay the dues, right. I paid the dues. And we've got to remember that we're not paying the dues for us, we're paying the dues for the kingdom. That's it. And if that can help other people, then we're open-handed with those things yep. to allow the kingdom to continue to grow and to bear fruit. Yep, that's it. Amen. I just really, I just really want to, as we finish out today's kind of a short episode, but I just really want to go back and ask one more big question about the macro understanding of what are some, maybe one or two ideas that you have that conceiving of New York as an entire life of Paul, all three journeys, rather than just maybe a single city stop on one of the journeys, what are some ways in which you perceiving, having the perspective of seeing New York that way has changed you know, maybe you're thinking your perspective or the ways you're going to go about the next year or two of work. Uh, good question on the spot. I don't know that I have, uh, multiple things. The first thing that comes to my mind, Dave, is, uh, that Paul didn't and Barnabas on that first journey and then Silas and Timothy with him on the second journey, but they, they went to a part of the Jerusalem around to Illyricum focused in and then went back to check on that and it goes, expands out a little bit and then they expands out a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think one of the, the key pieces is to focus. So we, we use that, uh, I'll bring back to some of the same stuff we already talked about, like the acronym of CFC that I've got to, especially in a place where there's so much whirlwind and so much happening. Um, it's pretty key that I don't 
try to think so macro and just so big and so many different things that I, it, it all just can be swept away with the wind in a minute. And so I think one piece is we've got to, we've got to have a clear target for a season that we're even shutting out other things to get to focus there. Um, and then that can expand and go to the next piece. So I think in thinking about New York that way, it's helpful because it begins to hem me in, in a needed way so that we're focused enough that we get to some traction. Well, Mark, I appreciate you letting me put on, put you on the spot because it also illustrates one of the things that you and I are wanting to do with H3X. And that is, uh, we always wanted to, to give other people an opportunity to peer into the conversations that you and yes. I are having because they're so fruitful for us that we're saying, Hey, we want to, we want to share this. So that means we're not coming to these podcasts with all the answers. We're coming to these podcasts with our growth, with our conversations, with our learning earnings and our developments to show you guys the journeys that we're on as well with hopes that it can encourage you to keep going on the journey. And so when I put Mark on the spot and he goes, Oh, I don't know. It's because we don't have all the answers. But yeah. what I love about this conversation, Mark is, is that you are constantly going back to the scriptures and butting it up against the barriers and the culture that you're experiencing, which That's is right. overwhelming in New York and asking the hard questions. It says, if it's not doing what I know it should be doing, then instead of me just keep pounding, I'm going to go back and be like, what questions am I needing to ask? Father, speak to me. And just this simple perspective of you going, what if I looked at New York now as an entire life of Journeys of Paul yeah. instead of just a single stop at one city? How will that then affect the way that I approach the city? Even that yep. simple little question, you willing to be asked, a asking that question, I think is a great model for us to constantly be going back to the scriptures, pushing it against the cultural realities that we have and saying, Lord, what must I do to get the kingdom to move forward in the power of the Holy Spirit? Amen. Thanks for listening, for watching. If this content has been helpful for you, please take a minute to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. It really helps us to get this content out there farther to serve Jesus, grow his kingdom, and accomplish the Great Commission until there is no place left. Much love to you guys. See you next time.